Are you interested in becoming a good Company of Heroes player? I'm a top 100 player and I'm happy to show you how it works in 4 comprehensive steps from beginner to pro. The first step for beginners is to focus on the key mechanics of the game. First, cover and vulnerabilities. All units benefit from cover. A unit in cover wins against the exact same unit without cover. At this point just follow your intuition. However, there are 4 types of cover. A. Negative cover, for instance on open streets depicted with a red sign above the respective squad. B. No cover. C. Light cover, for instance behind a wooden crate depicted with a yellow sign. And D. Heavy cover, behind sandbags or stone walls, for instance depicted with a green sign. Thus, always make sure that you use natural cover positions or build up your own cover with sandbags on strategically important positions. Often it makes sense to first deny important cover positions for the enemy using barbed wire and then build up your own cover using sandbags while capturing a control point at the same time. Be aware, however, that the cover signs do not apply universally to all directions of a squad. If a squad is being fired at from a direction that is not covered by cover, the cover does not count. This becomes especially important if you use a green cover point in the middle of a red cover area and the squad using the cover is being fired at from a non-cover direction. The incoming damage will be charged with a red cover multiplier even though there is a green cover sign above the squad. The directional cover mechanism for infantry applies similarly to vehicles. Vehicles usually have most of their armor at the front. So make sure you do not expose the rear or side armor of a vehicle to enemy fire if not needed. At the same time, vehicles when stationary can provide green cover for your infantry. Third, which unit or weapon is supposed to do what? Here again follow your intuition. Take your time observing what weapons your infantry units are carrying. Is it an SMG? Then it'll be effective at close range. Is it carrying a long rifle? Then it'll be effective at long range. Are two or four models of a squad carrying anti-tank weaponry? Then the unit will do anti-tank damage and little anti-infantry damage. Same applies for tanks for instance. A Panzer IV with three MGs will do lots of anti-infantry damage. However, since it's also eventually carrying a 75mm barrel, it'll do anti-vehicle damage as well. A Stuck with just a huge single barrel will wreck vehicles but rather do less anti-infantry damage. Thus always make sure to bring up the units to the battlefield that match the needs of the situation. Just immediately rushing Panthers because they are big iconic tanks is certainly not a good idea when your opponent is mainly struggling you with infantry and most likely no tanks will come that are too dangerous. Why is that? Watch the Panther. It's obviously a tank killer. Second, experience and veterancy. Make sure you don't lose entire units. Retreat beforehand even if only one model survives. This is important because it gives units experience and with that veterancy depicted with stars above the unit making it stronger and often giving it additional abilities. Also reinforcing surviving units is less expensive than rebuilding it. The second step for beginners is to focus on RTS elements. First, build orders. This aspect is closely related to the previous point and it's important even for experienced players. Which unit is supposed to do what can also mean as much as build up mainline infantry first as well as your workhorses. Mainline infantry can do capping as well as fighting. If you however decide to open with a fast capping unit, your mainline infantry rather should be used for fighting. If you open with a heavy machine gun for suppression or a sniper for manpower bleed, you need more scouting to use these units effectively. And your mainline infantry may do this as well as do the capping. Heavy machine guns and snipers also need to be played quite actively and aggressively, rather than static to be effective. Now, as soon as you build mainline infantry and workhorses, make sure that you get techs and units to prepare for future threats. If you can expect the opponent to build light anti-infantry vehicles due to your sniper for instance, prepare for building an appropriate counter instead of making more and more and more mainline infantry. Second, RTS control mechanisms and hotkeys to use your actions per minute more efficiently. 
First and most importantly, use shift to assign follow-up commands, for instance to let a unit cap a second point instantly after capping the first one. Follow-up commands also apply for first building sandbags, then do capping, then do a retreat for instance. This way you use your APM much more efficiently and prevent idle time of your units. Also use attack commands to move your units instead of a direct right click command. This way your unit will stop and fire instead of running into an enemy potential close range squad and getting wiped in a few seconds. Once you master this, use hotkeys, first frequently used ones like those for attack movements or for retreat and then eventually rare ones. This will reduce your DPI usage so that you can focus your cursor on the most important areas of the screen, these where the micro of your units takes place. The third step for experienced players is to focus on the entire game, not just on single aspects. First, use the minimap or tactical map to always know where stuff is happening. Around 70% of my playtime I look at the minimap rather than on units or the surrounding. And when I get tired I start enjoying the nice boom and pow and then I lose the game. Instead of using the tactical map I would even recommend just to use the minimap because every time you open and close the tactical map it costs you two actions of your APM. Play all fractions. This will show you all strengths and weaknesses of the fraction. This way you can adapt your build orders to the fraction you play against if you know the enemy fraction is lacking earlier infantry vehicles for instance but relies on strong expensive infantry eventually go for a sniper for instance. And third, analyze replays. Your own replays will show you mistakes you did as well as replays of pros may show you great ways how to play certain units or master sticky situations. The fourth step for getting good sounds strange but it is to focus on tactics. First, use your units effectively. Is a sudden combat to my advantage or to the opponent's advantage? In the latter case only make a soft retreat into good cover if you can come up with reinforcements quickly enough to win the fight efficiently. If that is not possible make the hard retreat into the base immediately. A retreated but fresh unit quickly is back on the battlefield and eventually in a more useful place on the map. This way you can rally your units to better engagements. If the unit however took too much damage, you still can use it for capping after retreat until he'll arrived to save manpower instead of letting it fight because someone has to do the capping, right? Second, reconnaissance and engagements. Use reconnaissance if you are not sure about the positioning of the enemy army. If you are aware of the positioning however, you should only take engagements that are to your favor. Very often I see pushed back players with full retreated armies who send unit after unit out of the base and unit after unit runs toward an opponent's unit behind green cover and loses the engagement and the player loses the manpower and then the game. Don't do that. Plan your maneuvers. Is there an MG or an anti-tank gun? Scout it, snipe it or use indirect fire. Is there a unit in green cover? Do the same or use your flamer since it does additional damage against covered units or in this case just rely on a good old big blob. If you got pushed back it's no big deal. Calm down, make up a plan and then push back. Third, to blob or not to blob that is the question. Is the enemy playing a build relying on strong but few units or are they going for a sniper or an early anti-infantry vehicle? If you can't afford the specific counter in time, just build more mainline infantry and form one or more blobs. This way you may force your enemy into retreat and then you do the capping. For example, if there is a sniper and you cannot afford a counter sniper or a squad that is able to cloak and wait behind enemy lines until the sniper gets close enough to take him out, just run towards the sniper using a big blob. This way the sniper needs to retreat more than it can take out your models, which lowers its efficiency. The same applies for early light vehicles. However, if your opponent is playing a heavy machine gun, you obviously don't want to feed it with a nice big blob that gets pinned entirely. And here we are talking about how to counter blobs. Use HMGs to pin down the entire blob or use mines. Each squad that hits a mine at the same time 
will lose up to two models. Imagine a blob of five squads hitting a mine. The enemy immediately loses up to 10 models at a time, which can equal about 300 manpower. Now offset this with a mine that costs about 35 pieces of ammunition. Fourth, fight before you cap. If you first spread your army and cap, your opponent will force you off the map unit by unit and do the recapping afterwards. This way you lose more manpower as well as map control. Thus, fight firsts, or for instance in the very beginning of the game, make up a capping order that allows for all of your units to only be around one screen length away from each other any time. This allows your units to help each other out in a sudden combat. Fifth, Mines win games. After you capped, place traps like mines out of the sight of the enemy. Use defensive mines to back up your backline as well. So that when the opponent attacks, for instance, vulnerable units of yours, the advance is eventually stopped by a mine. The same applies, of course, for other traps like explosive charges as well. Sixth, push only what you need to push for. In case you and your opponent both are already floating tons of fuel, for instance, don't do investments to push for a certain fuel point. If your enemy is heavily defending a control point both of you don't really need, enjoy that and instead focus on something important like victory points for instance. Seventh, don't ever be greedy. Did you nearly kill that tiger? One shot was missing? So in case you can't be quite sure that the finishing engagement will be successful, don't do it. Except the pushing unit is sacrificial because you are floating tons of resources, for instance. In Company of Heroes, a good player rarely uses units entirely and it should not always be your primary goal to kill a full unit or a weaker. At the end of a game, you can win by making your opponent lose all his victory points and still not have lost any units. And least, stay calm and stay friendly. Focus on good gameplay, not on toxicity. I often see players raging about supposedly unfair RNG, losses of units and then they are insulting everybody and with that they only focus on the bad things lowering their own morale. That is maybe one of the biggest mistakes. We all should know that RNG happens for all players equally, but we as humans always just see the bad things happening to us. So for becoming a really good player, calm down. Focus on the good things that happen and don't drop from the games too early. I already wasted the entire early game severely but still won the game. And when you won, honor your opponent with a good old GG, well played and good time.